Hi there, my name is Diana Karamakoska and in this week's video we are looking at communication barriers. There are three levels at which communication can take place. Observation and participation is done with the senses and is at the physical level. So this is where you will see noise and environmental barriers to communication. Understanding and awareness is at the intelligence level, and barriers at the intelligence level can range from having cross-cultural issues, linguistic barriers, and also barriers within the organization. The third level is acceptance at the emotional level. Barriers here will be linked to emotional feelings and ex experiences from the client. Anything that hinders the process of communication at any of those three levels is a barrier. Barriers to communication can be defined as the aspects or conditions that interfere with effective exchanges of ideas or thoughts. The types of communication barriers range from having physical, linguistic, static issues, emotional, experiential, cross-cultural barriers and organisational barriers that we will cover in the next few slides. The first one being physical barriers. This ranges from time pressures, so rushing to complete a conversation, environmental issues such as furniture placement, office arrangement and office space, where it can be clunky, difficult to move around and causes discomfort. You may also have uncomfortable chairs or distracting pieces of furniture being placed in odd places. The noise also impacts on the level of ability to hear people properly and distractions. So having other people in your vicinity who are quite talkative, loud, and ultimately distract you from the conversation. With linguistic barriers, we're looking at the understanding of language because it is a critical component to any conversation. Avoid using jargon or complicated terms when you are dealing with clients and patients and health professionals outside of your field of work. Be aware of semantics, the meanings behind words and the way that sentences are phrased, as this can be misinterpreted through different cultures. Be aware that not everyone has the same level of language skill, and this can vary from different languages as well. Use words carefully as they can have both positive and negative connotations. So for example, the words like cheap and inexpensive, they can be interpreted in both negative and positive light, and this will also need to be clarified with your patient. So focusing on semantics specifically, many words have multiple meanings. These can confuse people if we are not aware of what we are saying or describing. For example, a water pill. This could be a pill with water in it, but the term is actually used to describe a diuretic that causes a person to lose water from their body. Similarly, the word motion could mean to walk or run, but it could also refer to a bowel motion. And this is why we require you to be specific when you are discussing these types of items with your clients or patients. Looking at static with language, static occurs when we speak in a way that is distracting or not fluent. Some people forget to finish sentences before moving on to a new sentence. Others say um or ah uh quite a lot or they use terms repeatedly that distract from the conversation. For example, terms like, you know, and like. Moving on to emotional barriers now and looking at the most common types in patients or clients that you will see, these vary from fear and anxiety to suspicion, 
uncertainty and distrust. These barriers come from previous experiences, stories from other people, and a poor understanding of the process or a lack of wanting to be here. It's your job as a health professional to reassure them of your position and your role in this process. Extending on with experiential barriers, this is based on previous experiences of the client or they can be experiences that were shared by others that they know, such as their family or friends. This may be completely unfounded or may be based in truth. For example, myths such as physiotherapists can cause pain and podiatrists can slip and cut your feet. To overcome this, trust and credibility needs to be established very early in your therapeutic relationship. Try to do this within the first meeting of the client and try to maintain this with every visit or checkup. Looking at cross-cultural barriers, these types of barriers may be as a result of beliefs, their values, norms and practices, or they may be language-based. It is important to understand the cultural background of clients where possible. You can also use interpreters that are trained and professional if there are language barriers that prevent you from discussing things with your client. Be respectful and refrain from judgment of other cultures and practices, especially when you are discussing things that appear specific to their culture. Looking at organisational barriers now, Poor team communication can lead to barriers in the service delivery and or the patient's healthcare. The lack of organisational support or effective communication can flow onto the teams in practice. So it's essential that you follow up with any health professional that you do refer your client to and that you also maintain contact with your client and any other team members involved in the patient's care.